There is a game that is absolutely killing it right now. It is one of the most played games on Steam right now, keeping up an average player base of 40,000 players and growing. Suffice to say, it has absolutely taken the platform by storm. Mac Chista host, and yeah, we're reviewing BattleBit. BattleBit is a game all about those massive battles. Even the smaller games have a 64 player count, and this goes up to 128 to 257 players. The first thing that most will notice about the game is probably its graphics. Now, being a low poly game, it's not gonna knock your socks off, I can tell you that. That being said, they work. They don't take away from the game at all. Hell, on the plus side, the graphics being so simple means that this game can run on pretty much any system. So if your computer's looking a little old, this game could probably still give it a good go. And trust me, this game runs smoothly. Even on the larger maps with all these players, I noticed pretty much no lag and a fluent experience overall. The game has a lot of game modes, but the best and most often played one has to be Classic Conquest. You know what the deal with this is, you play it on a huge map, and across that map are these zones that you have to control to win the game. So you have to have these battles and firefights over who controls them. Pretty typical. And the way it plays out here is, each team is given a number of tickets, and the less control points you hold, the faster these tickets are lost over time. Whoever runs out first, loses. Too long, didn't read, just capture the control points. And let me tell you, I love this game mode. The locations on the map offer a lot of variety as to how conflicts play out. For example, between control points are these kind of open fields. So you'll have these open field kind of long range engagements where you're trying to break through the enemy, but then you might move inside of a close quarters area, like a train yard, and that's when things become really chaotic. You might move inside of a city and it transitions to this brutal urban combat with gunfights happening all around it. There'll be gunmen in and on buildings, firing on people below, people scrambling for cover, buildings getting swept through and cleared. Whether you're attacking or defending, it's really something else. Even beyond that, there's so many locations and spots to fight that it really changes how you experience the game, and it's overall a welcome variety. And the smooth gunplay ensures a satisfactory combat experience. And then you got the vehicles rolling in. You got tanks, you got APCs, Humvees, quads, helicopters, even naval assets. These are pretty fun to fight with, in, or against. Driving is as good as it should be, and mowing down people with a light machine gun mounted on a Humvee is, it's just great, man. And maybe it's a small thing for me to rave about, but I really enjoyed how transports feel like a decently vital part to the game. There were many times where I had to climb into Humvees and APCs with other people to get from point to point quicker. It's just that I've played a lot of games where armored transport is criminally underutilized, so to see it used here is actually pretty refreshing. And there are some other modes as well. Domination is basically the small scale version of the game. Maps are shrunk and vehicles are eliminated for an infantry focused experience. No matter the game mode, it is incredibly fun to move and maneuver through the game. Maps offer not just size, but verticality, tons of opportunities for movement. Move through buildings, jump over roofs, bust open walls with sledgehammers, and throw up grappling hooks to get up on vantage points. Most everything in the maps are destructible as well, which really adds to the carnage. No matter what size you play the game at, the game is going to be suited for it. Maps end up being big enough to accommodate a grandiose battlefield, but not too big where something like half the map ends up being completely empty. Gunfights occur throughout the map, allowing for the game to be a chaotic mess wherever you go. You can spawn in and get in on the action pretty quick. Overall, gameplay is pretty straightforward, but will undoubtedly yield countless hours of enjoyment. On the technical side of things, the game offers five classes for variety. The singular squad leader, whose responsibility it is to issue attack orders and drop off rally points for the team to spawn at. The assault class is more or less the standard class and is given higher reload, ADS, and weapon swapping speeds. While all classes can revive and bandage players, the medic can do so faster than the others, and is the only one in the game that can actually replenish health. This is all very invaluable, as health is, understandably, a commodity in the game, and being able to heal not just others, but also yourself, makes it a very enticing class. And really running around trying to keep everyone topped up on health and alive is an intense experience in an already chaotic game. For once, being Mr. Healer McGee is actually pretty fun. The engineer's play type revolves around vehicles. While they can repair them, more often than not, you'll be taking an RPG to disable enemy vehicles, and well, it's also a pretty good anti-infantry option as well. The support class can drop down ammo crates, allowing others to refill ammo and gadgets, but they also have access to light machine guns, boasting a high ammo capacity to absolutely mow down and suppress enemies with. And then you have Recon, which is basically the sniper class, given a long-range sniper rifle to pick off enemies from afar. It's a fun class to play, just hang back and take pot shots, all the while trying to stay out of the line of fire.
all the classes are pretty balanced. There are various guns and gadgets exclusive to each class, so there's a lot of appeal to playing all of them at some point. And if you ever get tired of the way one class plays, all you need to do to kind of change things up is to just choose another. And I just absolutely dig the loadout customization. There is a surprising variety of guns, attachments, and gadgets to unlock. The game has a surprising amount of statistics and weapon attachments to change them, so you can pretty much fine-tune everything for the playstyle that suits you best. I think the only problem I really have with it is that you can't create pre-made loadouts. If you want to change over to something a little different, you have to painstakingly go through the specific things you want to edit. As opposed to, okay, I don't want to play with loadout 1 anymore, I'd rather play loadout 3, something like that. Guns are unlocked by earning experience points and leveling up, which is typical. You unlock individual attachments for individual guns by getting kills with them. What's so notable about this is how it really doesn't feel grindy at all. Gun types have a ton of crossover, so like assault rifles in particular can be fielded by the assault, medic, and engineer class and attachments carry over between classes as well. And I'm really glad that the game does that. A lot of games do this thing where class progression is segregated from each other and it just becomes this huge grind fest. It's nice to see a game that dumps off the grind at its front door. I'm not sure if you could really judge a game based on its community, but teamwork is something that's generally practiced in this game very well. You can spawn on top of squad mates to get back in the battle quicker, and when you go down, people will generally go out of their way to revive you and medics actually do their job of replenishing your health. What I've noticed about these kind of battlefield games is that teamwork can be a bit of a mixed bag. But in this game, people are usually pretty good about it to the point where it's a good strategy to stick around other players, and it tends to be a lot more fun too. There's not a lot that I don't like about the game. There are small things I've noticed, but there's very little in the way of bugs and glitches. I seriously cannot understate how polished this game is. From top to bottom, it's surprisingly smooth. That being said, I think the medical mechanics are kind of dumb every now and then. When you get down, you're put on some sort of timer. When that timer goes all the way down, you die for real and you have to respawn. The problem is, even when someone's in the process of reviving you, that timer doesn't pause, it keeps going down. It can be really annoying to heal someone only for them to die partway through because there just wasn't enough time to bring them back up. Also annoying is how multiple people can bandage or revive someone at once. It doesn't speed up the process, it's just a waste of time for multiple people to provide medical aid to a singular person. The game should really make it easier for players to tell, okay, this player's already being helped, I shouldn't waste time on them. While I do welcome proximity voice chat in most of the video games I play, there's still gonna be some people who don't want to voice chat, especially since the game literally says that they may record you for moderation purposes. Look, say whatever you want, but uh, no thank you. I get it, you wanna create a safe and comfortable experience, yeah, but the thing is, I don't feel very safe or comfortable knowing that I could be recorded at any time, but I digress. Now the game does actually let you opt out of voice chat and moderation, but the problem with that is you can't communicate with your team. You can't call out for medical aid, ammo, or stuff like that. Surely there could be some sort of pre-recorded voice line or something added for players to call attention to themselves. Otherwise, it's actually possible for you to get down and your teammates may unknowingly abandon you. And you can't call out to say something like, hey, I'm still alive, pick me up, bro. And really, with a game this big, at the end of the day, you're just gonna die a lot. And there's not a lot you can do about it. You will get outflanked, you will get randomly sniped, you will take many RPGs to the face, and yeah! It's frustrating, but it comes with a territory with a game this massive. Best you can do is respawn and get back in there, you know? And no shotguns. Just saying. Battle bit. What can I really say about it? I mean, look, it might seem like a straightforward game. Ooh, big battle, terribly dur, but you play it for yourself and you just understand it, man. Everything it does, it does well. From its massive battles, to its maps, to its guns, to its control, quality, quantity, the game has both, man. Uh, you've heard people say it a lot because it is absolutely true. This game puts anything that comes out of the AAA space to absolute shame. And you know why? Because it works. Because it's Fun. And it's honestly just refreshing to see a game use early access for its intended purpose of seeking feedback instead of an excuse to release a broken, unfinished product for a quick buck. I give Battlebit a 9 out of 10. It is a fantastic game. As far as recommendations go, generally, I would recommend it. I mean, it's a fun, polished game that's pretty casual friendly, all things considered, and it's really easy to get into. And when you look at its price tag of $15, I mean, usually I recommend people to wait for a sale before getting a video game, 
but I mean, this is a welcome exception. $15 is a steal for what you're getting. And don't worry, there aren't any microtransactions or loot boxes, just a completely optional DLC made if you want to support development of the game. Now that being said, I don't know how this game is going to do in the future. It certainly looks bright, I can say that, but I've seen a lot of these, ooh, big maps, massive battles, all these soldiers running about, and it's not uncommon for them to empty out. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to this game, but I recommend doing your research to make sure that this game is alive and well before spending the money on it. But this review is being made like two weeks after its launch, so I really don't think it'll be a concern as of now. To finish off the review, I really hope that AAA developers are looking at what games like these are doing and taking notes. I mean, they're probably not, let's just be honest, but this is really what the industry needs. Good games that feel complete. It's something that is shockingly lacking in today's climate, so thank god a game like this comes along and shows everyone how it's really done. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You have just watched a video from the Jetta Vision. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Jetta Vision, signing out. You all have a good one. We will rock.